Good afternoon. And thank you for allowing me to speak for you, uh, with you today. Um, <clears throat> I'm a technologist. Uh, I, you know, I believe you become an engineer um, and a technologist because you want to, because you're an eternal optimist, because you think that you can make <clears throat> the world a better place through building things. And I think one of the problems with engineers is we, we often try and uh, we, we build solutions and then we go and look for problems um, to go and solve. Um, but I'd like to um, share with you just uh, some of the thoughts that, that I have and, and, and some of the experience we've had in, in building technologies and, and hopefully the solutions that we've been able to find. Um, I have to start the talk with uh, a, a big piece of engineering, of course. That's the Saturn V rocket, um, which delivered Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin um, to the moon in 1969. Um, but this is not really about that technology. It's, it's about the idea of a moonshot. Um, something that's so complicated, so Im nearly impossible um, that you need thousands of people to make it happen. Um, but I think more importantly or more interestingly is the fact that President Kennedy in 1961 had this dream um, and said that by the end of the decade, um, humankind would be able to put people on the moon um, and more importantly also get them back. Um, and they'd be able to do that in, in 10 years. Um, and I was just thinking about this idea of, of a moonshot uh, when I was thinking about this talk. Um, wh what makes something so, so inspiring that thousands of people will, will dedicate their lives to it? Um, and I was thinking about this, and obviously, the, first off, it needs to be really hard. Um, it needs to be nearly impossible, but just, just not quite impossible. Um, it also needs to be a bold idea, something that you can get lots of people excited about because you surely aren't going to get people on the moon by doing this on your own um, and you need to inspire people. Um, and then finally, I think the, the interesting thing is that it, uh, true moonshots, truly large ideas, um, have consequences that way outstrip what the original innovators uh, or initiators really thought about. Um, and quite often, the, the consequences, the unintended consequences, are much more interesting than, than the original idea itself. Um, so moonshots are, are not necessarily just engineering feats. Um, for instance, I think uh, the fact that, let's see, moonshots are getting remote controls at work, for instance. Um, <laughs> there you go. That is a moonshot. I think very few of us thought uh, throughout the 20th century that we would have a dem democratic South Africa. Even in 1990, when Nelson Mandela was released, it looked almost impossible. Uh, but that day did happen in 1994, uh, 20 years ago. If you look carefully, you could see I'm standing right in the, in the <laughs> bottom right cheering. Um, and I got really inspired. I hope there, were there are people in this audience today who, who were there uh, in Pretoria 20 years ago. Um, and obviously it needed somebody to have that vision to inspire us uh, to overcome our differences to make a democratic South Africa happen. Um, but it's also um, incredible that 20 years later we had an election where uh, we're still democratic. As a matter of fact, we're working, uh, this year we worked in the elections in South Africa. And I was really proud to be involved in these elections as well. But the irony was what we were doing this time is trying to get the vote out. So I think it's quite an interesting um, place in a democracy when young people think they don't need to vote anymore because we have such a st uh, strong uh, economy, uh, strong uh, democracy. I guess that's a good sign. Uh, but our campaign this year was really a get out the vote campaign, which is quite an irony. Um, another moonshot is obviously the printing press. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this because you know I think, like Bill Gates says, we tend to overestimate the impacts of technology in the short term and uh, we underestimate in the long term. And the printing press had this really huge effect. Obviously, it made books really cheap and, and uh, easy to obtain. But the, the effect that I think had a much larger impact on humanity was the fact that you could fairly easily go and print books. And the unintended consequence that a whole bunch of stuff got printed that had absolutely nothing to do with original purpose, which is obviously printing Bibles. Um, and um, by the end of the, the 15th century, um, there were about 20 million books in, in publication. Um, and I think the fact that a whole bunch of reprobates and crazy people could go and print books directly led to the fact that we had something called the Renaissance and then the Enlightenment, and which made it possible for, t for us to, to put people on the moon. Um, so I think in a similar way now, we, we tend to talk a lot about mobile mobiles and, and how it'll connect people to information and how we can create the information to push that to people in, in the developing world. Um, but I think the, the much more interesting opportunity for us is to make the creation of content 
much more democratic. Um, in other words, allowing anybody to create content with a mobile device. Um, and we are on this, I mean, it's obviously an incredible opportunity. Um, we have a billion people in Africa. Within five years, every single person will have a mobile device, probably a smartphone. And I think more importantly than just consuming content, we'll be able to create content. Um, and what that makes it possible is that we'll have the type of content which is localized, which is in the right language, which is relevant to the person, which gets created at the right time, um, which really has an impact and allows somebody to make an uh, important decision about their life. So my moonshot, um, there's nothing like um, putting something in public to, to make sure you happen, and, and this was a tweet uh, from, from last year. And I felt that, you know, in a world where, where Facebook is available for free, we should be able to make all the world's information available, available universally on any mobile device, and it should be freely available. Um, and that's what we've been working towards for the last couple of years, and specifically around health and educational information and making that completely free, no matter what type of device you have, um, over the last year. We call that Universal Core, and very importantly, it's not just to consume content, but to give power to people to create content as well. So I think a fantastic example, another amazing moonshot is Jimmy Wales, who had this completely crazy idea that maybe you could create the world's largest encyclopedia by giving people the power to create that content themselves and update it to a website. But there is a problem with um, Wikipedia, um, even though it's the world's fifth largest website um, and has got amazing number of articles in over 260 languages, there are only, of the half a billion people that visit every, mo every month, only about 65 million come from Africa or India. Now that number really should be 1.5 billion. And obviously the reason here is that we don't have access, um, you need a data capable device to, to uh, obtain that content. But I think more importantly, it's really hard. I mean, I, I don't know how many of you have actually managed to update a new article, create a new article in Wikipedia. It's really hard. And most of the content gets updated by people like me, pale males. Um, there's very little content that's, cre that's being created in Africa. And important information like this, malaria, uh, that we need in, in, in Africa is hidden or inaccessible because we don't have the right type of devices. So one of the small things that we managed to do is look at the way people currently use mobile phones, even the simplest dumb phones, and the way you can buy airtime, which is a very simple system called USSD, and we implemented this together with Wikipedia to make it possible for people to access Wikipedia. So what we have is of the four or five billion phones out there, all of them can now access Wikipedia, and they don't need to have a data connection. And to show you what that looks like, is right in the beginning there, somebody is texting a very simple code, is searching for Desmond Tutu, and then the system disaggregates that article and chunks it, and you can choose which, which part of the article you want to read, and it sends it to you via multi-part SMS. So moonshots and, and, and having big impact doesn't necessarily require thousands of engineers. It just requires us to look at what people's needs are and make information available to them that they really need. So we launched this in Kenya, and, and like any true internet service, um, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an internet service if, if I couldn't give you the, the kind of breakdown what people search for. And uh, it's um, uh, not always just life enhancing information that people search for. Um, uh, that's the, the frequency diagram of the searches that, that have been happening in Kenya. Um, and I, I don't know what it is about internet services, why football is always so popular. I'm not a great football fan myself, and Chelsea and, and Liverpool uh, and Man U always make it to any kind of internet service that you, that you build. Um, but we've had all, mo more than a million searches in the last six months um, with a service that wouldn't have been possible um, if you couldn't access it over basic phones. And we hope to make it accessible to every single person with a basic phone uh, in Africa. Um, so I want to talk a, about a, another project that, that we worked with and the power of serendipity as well. Um, so South Africa is in an incredible situation. We ha really have wonderful public health systems. We, we you know, almost every single mother can access public health uh, service for free. Yet uh, one of our big challenges is that people don't go uh, when they're pregnant uh, to clinics in time. In your 40 weeks of pregnancy, we really want you to um, go to the clinic in the first 10 weeks uh, when you're pregnant, and then also come for at least four ANC visits 
and go and deliver your baby at a, at a, uh, a clinic. One of the challenges we have is that at the moment in South Africa, uh, moms really on average only come halfway through the pregnancy or about four and a half months through the pre pregnancy. And what we felt was that mu there must be a way in which we can make information available to all moms um, about the, 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 the growth of their baby, the type of nutrition they need. Um, and this is a system that was uh, developed and you could see what we're trying to do here is make, make things really accessible and make it person, uh, personable. Um, and you can see, uh, hello mama, you'll start feeling your baby kicking soon. You may not be sure what the movements are at the first. They feel like gentle butterflies fluttering in your belly. Or, when your baby is born, she needs warmth. Hold the skin to skin and feed her precious breast milk. She needs nothing else for the first six months, not even water. Now, this content's being sent to each and every mother in South Africa for free on any kind of device, and this is, tracks the development of a baby, so all the messaging is exactly tailored to when she needs it and, and also at what time she needs it. We're very lucky that the South African government wanted to launch this. This is now a national program, so every single mother in South Africa, when she goes to a clinic, can sign up for this, completely free of charge, no matter what type of device. And of course, in the language that she speaks, um, so that she, she can understand the messaging. Over 150,000 moms have now been registered, um, and we hope there are a million births a year in South Africa. We hope in within two years that every single mom will be able to get this information. So I'd like to end with, uh, with an example that's not from Africa, um, that I find truly inspiring, um, and it's the largest democracy uh, on the planet, India, um, and they have more than 500 million people that voted this year. It's an enormous enterprise. It goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and I think one of the, the really important things around having a true democracy is also being able to make the decisions and have access to information when you need it. And so this is a project that we did in collaboration with some partners in India that made it possible for every single person to find out all sorts of interesting information about their candidates. So I'll read that to you and I hope it makes sense. So Sarunar Pol um, has got no criminal cases outstanding against him. Uh, his assets are 4.5 million crore, his liabilities are 30, and his highest level of education is a 12th pass. Now, can you imagine we could do this for every single election in Africa? Well, actually, that would be quite interesting. I would love to know, <laughs> for instance, you know, we could point the mobile device at every single palace that's built an interesting place in South Africa and find out how much it costs, for instance. <laughs> But I think this is um, such a simple service, and I think this points to where we really want to be going and making information available for people so that they can make the decisions, so we can have strong democracy, so can people can improve their lives. And we don't want to create that ourselves. We want people to be able to create that themselves. We have this incredible opportunity, this amazing network of mobile phones that everybody's got access to. And um, with that, I really want to end and ask you, um, given the opportunity that we have to build these services, um, what is your moonshot? What, what do you think are the services that people need, given this incredible opportunity and the network of devices and the fact that every single person will have a mobile phone? What is a service that you are going to build? Thank you so much.